Have you ever wondered how should we orient a solar panel to harvest the most energy from the sun? It sounds simple, just point it toward the sun, right? And yes, on a clear day, that's mostly true. The sun is the dominant light source. So the best strategy is to track the sun's position in the sky and align the panel toward it. But that's only part of the story. What happens when the sky is overcast? Or in an urban setting where the panel receives direct sunlight only part of the day, relying on sky patches and reflections from nearby buildings. In this video, you and I are going to solve this problem together. When a beam of light hits a solar panel, it delivers energy. The rate of that energy per unit area is what we call irradiance. Now imagine the panel is facing the light directly to the incoming rays. In that case, the panel receives the maximum irradiance, usually denoted as E0. But what if the light hits the panel at the angle theta? Same light, same energy. But now it spreads over a larger area on the surface. From simple geometry, we see that the two areas are associated with a factor of cosine theta. Let's put the surface area dA into the irradiance equation. We can now see how the surface receives less energy per unit area when light comes at an angle. So the irradiance becomes E0 times cosine theta. This is known as the Lambert's cosine law. It tells us the more slanted the light, the less energy per unit area reaches the panel. But it's more convenient when we express the irradiance using light coming from a particular direction, S. This leads us to the concept of radiance. Radiance is the differential power per unit area per unit solid angle. To define it precisely, we need to consider the projected area the portion of the surface visible from a given direction. This projection is corrected by a factor of cosine theta. Now we can express the differential power as this. This is the amount of power arriving at area dA from direction S through solid angle d omega. If we focus on just a single direction, the irradiance equals the radiance times the cosine theta and the unit solid angle. Now since the surface to move vector n and the light direction s are unit vectors, we can write cosine theta as their dot product. But this only works when the direction s is visible to the panel. If it's behind the surface, the dot product becomes negative. But the panel does not receive negative energy. To account for this, we have a max operator that clips the dot product as zero. We can now compute the total irradiance by summing up the contributions from all directions. Mathematically, this becomes an integral of directional irradiance over the visible hemisphere. The key question becomes, how do we choose the optimal surface normal vector n that maximizes this total irradiance? Let's take a closer look at this equation of total irradiance. We define the zenith direction pointing straight up as the unit vector z hat. Any direction vector s on the hemisphere can be represented as a rotation of the zenith vector. Let's denote this rotation operator as rs. Now what about the dot product? We can express this dot product as the vector multiplication. Here the transpose of a rotation matrix is its inverse. We can rewrite the vector multiplication back into the dot product. With this insight, we can reinterpret the total irradiance equation. The total irradiance is the convolution between the radiance function L and the kernel K on the sphere. For example, let's start with a one-dimensional radiance function L defined over incoming rays. This function can be quite complex, affected by occlusions, shadows, and refractions from the environment. The kernel K is the cosine of the zenith angle, clip it to be non-negative. It represents how sensitive the panel is to light coming from each direction. By convolving the radiance L with the kernel K, we obtain the irradiance function. The optimal orientation of the panel is the direction that maximizes this irradiance. Now let's move to a 2D example. Here we have a fisheye image that captures the radiance in all directions, essentially a projection of the environment onto a hemisphere. We apply the same cosine shape kernel K. By convolving the radiance with the kernel across the hemisphere, we generate an irradiance map. Orienting the solar panel at this direction harvests the most energy. 
So now the question is, how do we find the optimal orientation theta? This optimal direction clearly depends on the time of day and the lighting conditions. One idea is to mount a fisheye camera near the panel. This camera can capture the full radiance from all directions. From that, we can compute the direction that gives maximum total irradiance. But there's a catch. This adds additional hardware cost, and the camera itself is power hungry. So what can we do instead? Let's go back to our goal. We want to find the orientation that maximizes the total irradiance. Suppose we start with an initial orientation, and somehow we know the gradient of this irradiance function at that point. Then we can simply follow the gradient, adjusting the orientation theta step by step in the direction that increases irradiance. This method is known as gradient ascent. But how do we get this gradient? One practical idea is to add photo detectors mounted slightly tilted relative to the solar panel. These detectors measure the irradiance from directions theta plus delta theta and theta minus delta theta. The difference between their readings is called the photo differential. When the tilt angle delta theta is very small, the photo differential provides a good approximation of the gradient of the irradiance function. With this information, we can iteratively tilt the panel in the direction of the gradient, effectively climbing toward the maximum irradiance. But even though the irradiance function is generally smooth, it often contains multiple local maxima. Without a good initialization, following the gradient alone can cause the panel to get stuck at suboptimal local maxima, far from the true best orientation. How do we resolve this challenge? Let's take a closer look at the photo differential equation. This can be expressed as a convolution between the irradiance function e theta and another function h of theta. But it's not obvious what role this function h plays in modifying the irradiance. So we examine its Fourier transform. Shuffling the terms around, we recognize that part of the expression corresponds to sine omega delta theta. This result comes from Aurea's formula. Next, by multiplying the numerator and denominator by omega, we get a familiar form. This expression is called the sinc function, the Fourier transform of a box filter. The Fourier transform reveals that the function h is effectively performing a derivative operation combined with applying a box filter. According to the convolution theorem, multiplication in the frequency domain corresponds to convolution in the spatial domain. This means that the photo differential first blurs the irradiance function with a box filter, and then takes its derivative. Let's visualize what this means. When the tilt angle is very small, the box filter closely approximates a delta function, so it has almost no effect on the irradiance function. As we increase the tilt angle delta theta, the kernel width of the box filter grows wider. When the tilt angle becomes sufficiently large, the local maxima in the original irradiance function disappear. This is incredible. What this means is that by computing the photo differential, we are actually calculating the gradient of a blurred version of the irradiance function. Adjusting the panel orientation by following this gradient leads us toward a global maximal irradiance. And this holds true no matter how complex the environmental illumination is or how many local maxima exist in the original irradiance function. Let's see how this works in practice. Here we have a prototype solar panel system. It consists of three main components. The solar panel itself, the photodetector that measures directional irradiance, and the actuator that adjusts the panel's orientation toward the optimal direction. The photodetectors are mounted on the four sides of the panel, each tilted sufficiently large angle to capture the directional irradiance. The researchers test this system in five different scenarios. The first scenario is when the solar panel has direct sunlight exposure. The baseline we compare against are a solar panel that tracks the sun, and a panel fixed in a static orientation toward the equator. This plot shows the harvest solar energy over time. The vertical dash line marks the moment when the photo of the solar panels was taken. As expected, when direct sunlight is visible, 
both the sound tractor and the proposed method perform very well. On a cloudy day, the sound tractor struggles to find an optimal orientation and even harvests less energy than a panel fixed in a static position. With the panels are shaded by nearby buildings, the proposed system still harvests 10% more energy than the sound tractor and a fixed panel. In urban environments, sunlight reflected off nearby buildings can be a significant energy source. Here we see the panel briefly illuminated by strong refractions. The proposed panel orients itself in the direction of the refractions, harvesting substantial amount of power. The sound tractor, however, cannot adapt to such complex, time-varying lighting conditions. Finally, in the indoor environment, the lighting can change dramatically as people walking in the space can turn on and off different floor lamps, creating constantly shifting illumination. This makes the panel's ability to orient itself toward the directions of maximum irradiance especially important. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.